Hello and good morning. So Grace is napping. Steven is upstairs playing video games and I am about to go do something that I have not done since Grace was born. Something so crucial to my identity as a person. <laughs> Oh, I can't even say that with a straight face, but actually, I mean, this this makes me way more excited than it should, but let, let's go. Hello, welcome to Starbucks, how's it going? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Great, thanks, where can we get started for you? Can I get an impossible breakfast sandwich with no egg? Okay. And a grande iced vanilla latte. Yep, I drove myself to Starbucks. <laughs> also, oh my gosh, I feel like in the time since my induction and then to now, like kind of starting to enter back into the world a little bit, the world has changed so much COVID wise. The sign, the sign right here at Starbucks that used to say mask required at the window now says mask optional if fully vaccinated, which I am. And I have my mask here, but I guess I don't, I don't have to wear it. I still can wear it. When I went to Target the other day, the sign said the same thing, but I still wore my mask because I feel like especially when Grace is this young, any extra layer of protection we can have is great. Not just for COVID, but also just like for catching colds or the flu. You know, we don't want to be transmitting anything to her, but for the Starbucks window, I feel like, I feel like the risk is a lot lower. So I guess I won't put my mask on. This feels wrong. It feels like one of those dreams where you're not wearing pants and everyone's like, you forgot to wear pants and then you freak out. Hey. Hi, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Good. Nice latte. Thank you. And then the impossible sandwich will be right up. Cool, no rush. Oh man, my boob just started leaking. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know in a lot of places, masks were never required at drive through windows, but at least where I live here in California, that has been the norm for over a year now. And that was my first, first time going maskless in any type of like retail situation. Does Starbucks count as retail food service, I guess? The world is changing, my friends. And I know it's just going to Starbucks, but I think it's really good for me to get those little pockets of normalcy, of getting out of the house and not freaking out about being away from Grace. And actually, we'll talk more about this later in the vlog, but I think one thing that has kind of made me feel a little bit more comfortable in just leaving her at all is that we switched from 100% breastfeeding on demand to 50% breastfeeding and 50% pumping and then bottle feeding that breast milk. And so I know that even if she wakes up and she's like super, super hungry and I'm not there, there's milk ready for her in the fridge that Steven can feed her. And it's not like 100% I'm the only thing <laughs> that can feed her. I think mentally that has kind of freed me, freed me up a little bit. But like I said, we'll talk more about that later. I want to do like a whole kind of how breastfeeding has been going section in this vlog. But for now, gonna head home, enjoy my Starbucks and uh, put on a new shirt because this one is covered in leaky breast milk now. <laughs> I am beyond annoyed at myself right now. I just filmed like an entire clip in the mirror talking about these shorts that I wanted to show you guys. And then I realized that I didn't flip the microphone with this new camera. The mic right here is like super directional. So if the camera is facing out from me like this, I have to turn the microphone so the microphone is still facing towards me. And I didn't do that. So you can't hear me at all in that entire clip, but <laughs> it's fine. We'll just film it again. Here we are. This is the outfit of the day. Very simple, but I did actually get dressed today in something other than sweatpants. I have this little crop polo from Aerie and then these shorts, like I said, this is what I really wanted to talk about. These shorts I got from Target like a week ago. They were like 17 bucks and I am obsessed. First of all, they're like that perfect length where they stop my thighs from rubbing together. See? Look at that, no chub rub. <laughs> Second of all, the material, it, it's denim, but it's super stretchy. Like, look at that, stretchy here, stretchy at the waist. Very, very comfy for all day wear. And third, they're just cute as heck. <laughs> I'll link these in the description. They should still be available because I only bought them like a week ago. And if you saw the last vlog, I, I have a pair of shorts very, very similar to this from pre-pregnancy. And I was super excited to be able to wear them again, but they didn't fit anymore. And so I decided to go just buy myself a new pair that actually did fit and was super comfy. I love them. <laughs> 
All right, so it is a couple hours later now. I just finished hanging out on the couch with Grace for a little while, and now Steven is with her. And I figured this would be a pretty good time to set the camera up on the tripod, sit down, chat, and just kind of go over all of, all things breastfeeding, really. All right, so I have some notes here on my phone. I'm gonna be referencing these as I kind of walk you guys through what my breastfeeding journey has been like for the first month. Grace is one month and one day old as of me filming this. And so while I'm definitely still early on, I feel like I'm at the point now where I'm kind of figuring things out. We've definitely had some bumps in the road and we'll go over all of that. I also asked you guys over on my Instagram if you had any questions about what breastfeeding has been like for me. And so as I was writing down my notes here, I just integrated the answers to the most common questions from that Instagram post. So instead of doing like a Q&A section, I just kind of, I'm answering those questions as I walk through everything, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna talk about what breastfeeding was like in the hospital and kind of establishing things, and then what breastfeeding was like for me once we got home, and then kind of how everything changed after our second pediatrician appointment. And then I'll wrap things up by telling you guys my favorite products if you are breastfeeding, or if you're pregnant and you're hoping to breastfeed, things that, that may be helpful, or at least that have been helpful for me. Okay, does that sound good? Are we ready? I've got my notes. Let's do this. So I had talked about this in vlogs throughout my pregnancy, but I, I was really hoping to breastfeed, but I was also open to switching to formula or exclusively pumping, like really whatever it takes for my baby to be fed and happy. And also taking into account what works for me and what's good for my mental health and my well being. I feel like there can be a lot of, a lot of mom guilt around breastfeeding and whether you choose not to breastfeed or you can't breastfeed, I feel like there can be a lot of guilt with that. And I I experienced that after the second pediatrician appointment, which again, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about that. But that's one of the reasons that I really wanted to talk about this on the vlog and be open about it because like breastfeeding isn't something that you can practice before the baby gets here. It's not something that you can experience until you're in it until the baby's here and you're trying to breastfeed. And it's not always just easy. It doesn't always come super naturally. And so, but yeah, I was hoping to breastfeed. And then after I gave birth, I had a C-section. If you haven't seen my birth vlog, I will put a card for that up there. But I had a C-section. And so I wasn't able to attempt breastfeeding until I think it was four hours after the C-section, I was finally able to. And at my hospital, they had lactation consultants that were super, super helpful for us. And they had recommended that I start breastfeeding feeding on demand. So basically whenever she shows hunger cues or every three hours, if she doesn't wake up before then. They also recommended that I wait until four weeks to pump so that my body can kind of adjust to what supply Grace needs. And then after that, I can pump whenever I want to replace a feeding and also like add in one extra pump session a day if I want to build up a freezer stash. So that was the plan. That was what we were going to go with from the advice of the lactation consultants. But pretty much immediately, we realized that there were some latch issues and we tried a couple different things. The lactation consultants were super helpful in kind of helping me and Grace also figure out breastfeeding and what was going wrong. And what ended up working for us was using a nipple shield. So basically I didn't bring one up here with me. I wish I did, but I'll insert a picture of what it looks like here. It's basically just a little, I think it's silicone, a little silicone covering that goes over your nipple. And that pretty much solved our latch issue. So I was like, okay, we had that little bump. Everything's going to be smooth sailing from here. And it was for a little while. Things were going well. When, when you first give birth, what you are expressing to baby is colostrum. It's not what they call mature milk yet. And on the second day after birth, my milk still hadn't come in yet, which is pretty normal from what I've read online. And so the hospital wanted to intervene with formula. And at first I was a little bit bummed because like I said, there's that mom guilt of, of not being able to provide what your baby needs. And so at first I was like, oh, I really don't want to use formula, but you know, we have to do what's best for Grace. And this is what the hospital recommends. And I thought that they would bottle feed her the formula. And so that was another thing I was concerned about was, is introducing a bottle this early going to mess up how how things are going with breastfeeding at this point. But actually at the hospital that I was at, they don't use bottles. They use this thing called SNS, which it was so cool. Steven and I were like mind blown. Basically they take the formula and they put it in a syringe. They connect the syringe to a little tube and they feed the little tube through the nipple shield. And then they have her latch to me, to the nipple shield, like as if she was breastfeeding. And then they squeeze the syringe so that the formula goes through the tube into the nipple shield. So it's essentially like she's 
breastfeeding, but it's formula. It was so freaking cool. I thought that was really, really great. They also had me pump and then like they wanted her to eat 10 milliliters per feeding. And so they would have me pump beforehand. And so like with the first feeding, I pumped four milliliters. So they did four milliliters of my colostrum and then six milliliters of the formula. So we didn't know how long we were gonna need to supplement this way, but it ended up only being three feedings. In the morning on day three, I went to do a pumping session like I had for the past three feedings. And instead of getting like four milliliters, six milliliters, like I had been before, I pumped two ounces in four minutes, which is 60 milliliters. So at that point, the lactation consultants were like, okay, don't pump anymore. Your milk has come in. We don't need to do the formula supplementation anymore. Also kind of interesting, but when my milk, like my mature milk came in, it went from being like yellowy and a little bit thicker to like a pretty pure white. Like it was a stark difference. Like I could tell not only in the volume of what I was producing, but also in the color. And then I definitely felt it when my milk came in. My boobs got really, really hard and full. And I was producing an oversupply for I think the first like week and a half, almost two weeks, where basically even after I fed her, it felt like they weren't being fully emptied. Like there was still more there and it was pretty painful. Definitely engorged at some points and I started getting concerned, but I, I decided not to pump it out because the lactation consultant said that that could cause my body to continue to overproduce. There was one time where I went against that advice and pumped because my boobs were just like engorged and painful and I needed to pump it out. But like I said, after about a week and a half, two weeks, my supply kind of evened out. And now I feel like I'm producing pretty much exactly what Grace needs to feed, maybe a little bit more, but it's not painful anymore. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that happened at the hospital. I left the hospital on day four. So by the time we left the hospital, we were no longer supplementing with formula. We weren't really having any latch issues because of the nipple shield. Like everything was going really well. So the lactation consultants were like, cool, you're good. I felt good. I was getting confident. At the beginning, because of my C-section, I was really only able to do like the football hold. There are different breastfeeding positions. I learned this in my breastfeeding class, which by the way, I guess that's the only thing that you can really do to prepare for breastfeeding before you're actually doing it. But I did take a breastfeeding class beforehand and I do think that helped me. I learned a little bit about different positions, different interventions, things like that. And so I just, I did feel a little bit more prepared, but yeah, I couldn't do like the typical cross cradle hold because my incision was still really painful. So we went home. I was still just doing the football hold until a couple days after we got home, I started using the My Breast Friend pillow. I'm going to link all the products I talk about in the description, but the my breast friend pillow is basically like this kind of hard pillow surface that you like strap yourself into and using that allowed me to do the cross cradle hold without putting any pressure on my abdomen. So that was really great. And then now that pretty much all the pain from my C-section is gone, I'm able to just do cross cradle without the my breast friend. Sometimes I still use it because it's comfortable and it's convenient, but I don't need it anymore. So we're home, we're breastfeeding, things are going well. I am not pumping at this point, but I'm using the Haka on which whichever breast Grace was not feeding on. It's just this little like suction cup where it basically just catches the, the residual letdown from the other side that would normally just kind of drip all over my bra. And so I was actually able to build up like a small freezer stash just from the Haka, which was really cool. I usually collect like anywhere from one to three and a half ounces from the Haka. And that's just like the runoff from the other boob. So I feel like things are going pretty well. And then around maybe a week and a half, two weeks postpartum, Grace starts cluster feeding, basically feeding very, very frequently back to back with very minimal breaks in between. We have the hatch grow scale at home, which I highly recommend. I'll talk more about that in the product section, but we were using the hatch grow changing table. And according to that, even though that's not like exact, but according to that, she was not gaining weight. And so we're like, okay, something is going wrong here. We know I'm producing enough milk. We know she's spending enough time on the breast feeding something isn't adding up here. And so we went to her second pediatrician appointment. We basically explained this to her pediatrician. They weighed her and our, our scale at home was accurate. So the pediatrician referred us back to the lactation consultants and then also recommended that we switch to doing 50-50 direct breastfeeding and then pumping and bottle feeding for the other 
half of the feedings. Basically, the pediatrician said that this was an issue of transfer and not production. So the reason that the pediatrician wanted us to switch to doing 50% pumping and then bottle feeding is because then that would be easier to track. And so they could make sure that it really was just a transfer issue and that if at any point I was pumping, but it wasn't enough for Grace, that's then when we would want to start supplementing with formula. So I was really hoping to be able to continue still breastfeeding, even though we were also going to be pumping and then bottle feeding breast milk. But we did go to the store that day and get some formula in case I didn't produce enough and we needed to supplement. Because at the end of the day, like, yeah, I want to breastfeed. It's great if we can do that. But the most important thing is just making sure that she is healthy and fed and happy. And that's something that Steven kept reminding me of whenever I felt that like mom guilt creeping in of like, this isn't what I had imagined or what I wanted or what I'm quote unquote supposed to do. And honestly, oh my gosh, I am so glad that we switched to the 50-50 pumping and bottle feeding and then breastfeeding because not only did Grace get back on track with her weight, but my mental health got so much better. I feel like I was just in this like cloud of fatigue and sleepiness and stress in that, that cluster feeding time. And now not only was she satisfied, and so that released a lot of stress for me because I was concerned about her, but I was getting to sleep more and I was getting more breaks. And Steven was able to help with the feeding as well, instead of just sitting there with me on the couch in the middle of the night being like, you got this. And the thing is, I was planning to pump pretty often after after that four week mark anyways. You know, right now I'm on my maternity leave, so I had the time to exclusively breastfeed her. But um, when Grace is around three months, I'm planning on filming main channel videos again, kind of getting back into the work grind. And so I was planning on pumping pretty often, having a freezer stash, you know, having Steven or my mom be able to bottle feed her when I'm filming and when I'm working. And so in the end, like it just ended up happening like a week sooner than I had originally planned. So that's kind of where things are at right now at like four and a half weeks postpartum. I feel like we're in a good groove now with breastfeeding and using the nipple shields and then pumping and bottle feeding. We're working with a lactation consultant, so hopefully we'll be able to transition out of using the nipple shields. I would like to be able to do that, but right now they're helping with latch a ton. So I'm just glad. I'm glad that that intervention worked and I'm still able to breastfeed. And more than anything, I'm just glad that, that we figured out all, I mean, there were a couple different bumps in the road, but that with each of those different things, we were able to figure out what was wrong, what the solution was, and how to make sure that Grace is fed and happy because that is the most, most important thing to me. Okay, so favorite products. I talked a little bit about the Hatch Grow. Basically, it is a changing pad, a smart changing pad that is also a scale. It weighs your baby. Having the Hatch Grow has been such a huge help because not only does it give us a pretty accurate reading of what her weight is, but we've also been using it. You can do a weighed feeding. So you weigh the baby before, you breastfeed them, and then you weigh them after, and then it tells you what the difference was. And so that's how much breast milk she got in that feeding session. And that has been so helpful. Like just having that knowledge, so, so helpful in knowing that like the intervention was working, the change was working. There's still definitely that transfer issue where it just takes her a long time time to get a good amount of milk from the breast, but we're able to track it pretty well, which is definitely nice. The Hakka has been fantastic for not only catching like the excess milk that would normally just dribble down, <laughs> but also um, allowing me to build up a, a little bit of a freezer stash at the beginning without actually having to pump. This breast massager, Steven got me a Frida Mom like breast care kit. And this was by far the best thing in it. I think you can buy this individually too. It's just a little vibrating massager, but it has a heat mode as well. And so the massager combined with the heat, whenever I feel like my breast is getting a little bit too hard or lumpy, or that I might potentially be getting the start of a clogged duct, I just take this, I massage my boob a little bit and it's fantastic. Okay, nipple cream. I have just been using this 100% lanolin cream. It's not the fanciest. It kind of sucks when it gets on your hands and feels like Vaseline, but it works great and it's safe for babies. So I'm a big fan. I've already gone through 
two bottles of this. <laughs> in terms of nursing bras, the one that I am wearing right now and that has been my favorite, I tried a couple different ones, but this is the motherhood maternity one. These also do come in plus sizes and standard sizes, which is great. They're soft, they're comfy, they're stretchy, they get the job done. And then I had bought some of these reusable breast pads, but I also got a pack of single use breast pads for free with my breast pump. And I realized very quickly that the single use breast pads, not only, you know, are they producing extra waste, but they kind of suck in comparison to these. So these have been my go-to. I'm still gonna use up the single use ones that I have, but definitely will not be buying more. These are the best. Whew, we've been going for a long time. The camera battery died. I had to go downstairs and get a new one. But um, where were we? Okay, my breast pump. The breast pump that I got is the Motif Luna pump and I got it through the Aeroflow website. The breast pump seems pretty good. I don't really have any complaints about it so far, but it's not like amazing by any means. It does have to be plugged in. It's not wireless or anything. So I do have to be kind of like stationed in my in my chair or on the couch near an outlet. But the output seems decent from the pump. And my favorite thing about this pump is that I got it for free. <laughs> That Aeroflow website I learned about from my friend Kenzie and I feel like I just wanna scream it to the rooftops for any anyone else who's pregnant, anyone who's watching this who's pregnant because I would not have known about this otherwise and I would have just bought a breast pump with my own money and they were like hundreds of dollars. Um, but this website is super cool. You just, I entered in my insurance and then it told me which pumps were covered by my insurance, which pumps were partially covered, how much I would have to pay. And so this Motif Luna one was pretty highly rated when I did some research online and it was fully covered by my insurance. So I was like, cool, we'll try this one. We'll see if I like it. Maybe I'll end up getting like a higher end one and paying the extra for it myself later if I don't like this pump, but the pump's been fine. No complaints really, except for the fact that you have to be plugged in. That's my, that's my main complaint. Speaking of pumping, the Kindred Bravely pumping bras have been really great for being able to pump and be hands-free. In terms of just a nursing bra, I don't like them as much as the motherhood maternity ones, but for a pumping bra where that I don't have to hold the little flanges to my boobs. It's great, but um, they do run a little bit small. So I would size, if you're in between sizes, I would size up. I was between an extra large and an extra, extra large. And I first got the XL and it, it fastened, but it wasn't comfy. So I bought another one in the XXL and it's still tight enough to keep the flanges on, but way more comfortable. So I've also really loved my My Breast Friend pillow. I got the Boppy and the My Breast Friend. I will say from my personal experience, especially as someone who had a c-section the boppy is just kind of like an overrated pillow like it's really not that great you can just use a couch pillow to support your arm and you get the same thing but the my breast friend pretty great definitely recommend it definitely looks a little bit funny on but it works great and then the last thing that i had written down is just my breastfeeding cart which i let's go downstairs i'll walk you guys through everything that's in it i know i showed it on the vlog when i set it up when i was pregnant but i've definitely moved things around as i figured out like what i actually use what i don't use i've tweaked it to my needs and so i'll just kind of show you guys what it looks like steven's doing some tummy time in here with grace look at that neck strength all right, I am gonna go show off my breastfeeding cart on the vlog. <gasps> you good there, Grace? Yeah, say I'm a month old. <laughs> Yay, I'm a month old. Oh, two more feeding things that we've been pretty fond of. This Philips Avent bottle warmer has been good. And then the bottles that we've been using are the Komotomo. We really like them. Grace really likes them. She took to them well. And I just heated up this bottle for Steven to feed her. There you go. Thank you. So when I breastfeed, I am pretty much always in my recliner chair here. And so it's super convenient to just have the breastfeeding cart all set up right next to me. We also have a little laundry basket here because I'm constantly going through burp cloths and swaddles and nipple pads, but the cart. So on the top here is just the easy to grab stuff. I have my pump, which I pretty much always keep plugged in. And then I keep the tubes here, but the uh, bottles and the flanges are pretty much just always in a prepared perpetual cycle of being washed. So I usually just bring those over here right before I pump. Same thing with the haka. And then over here we have my breast pads, the reusable and the disposable, my nipple cream, the breast massager, and in this little yellow thing are the nipple shields, which if you're curious, look like this. And it just goes over the nipple and the milk comes out these little holes here. Second level, I have these little tiny burp cloth washcloth things. This is mostly just to clean up milk that's on Grace's face or all over me. And then this like bigger, thicker burp cloth is actually for burping her. We have a blanket, a swaddle, and 
some little face and hand wipes. And then the third floor, the bottom, we just have some breast heat packs that came in that uh, Freedom Mom breast care kit that Steven got me and my pumping bra. Also, here is what the My Breast Friend looks like. Let me put it on. Put it around you, like right under your boobs. Snap yourself in, put baby on here, and you're ready to go. So it is the evening now and Grace is napping. It's her last nap of the day. So I'm gonna wake her up in just a couple minutes here, feed her, have some awake time with her. We try to differentiate like daytime naps and like going to sleep at night. <laughs> Easier said than done with a newborn, but we try. We try not to have her last nap of the day go too late. So I'm gonna wake her up here. I, I try to get set, like everything set here in my breastfeeding chair before I go get her to feed. The last feed was a bottle feed, so this one is gonna be a breastfeed. So before I go wake her, I like to just get set here with like my water, my haka, my phone, all that stuff. One thing I forgot to mention about my breastfeeding journey is that I have had, I really haven't had bad like postpartum anxiety in general, but the one thing that I have been so anxious about is falling asleep while breastfeeding. I am so scared of that happening and then, you know, dropping her or falling asleep on her, or just anything bad happening because I wasn't awake enough when I was feeding her. And so I actually don't breastfeed her in bed at all. Even in the middle of the night feeds, whenever, whenever I'm feeding her, I come out here to my chair, turn on the TV, make sure that I am like fully awake. And that's why the breastfeeding cart was moved out here instead of in the bedroom, which is where I had set it up when I was planning everything out in pregnancy. But I hope you guys enjoyed hearing all the ins and outs of my breastfeeding journey so far. If you are not a parent and not someone who has breastfed, I hope this was just interesting to you. I feel like breastfeeding is, is really kind of crazy when you think about it. It's really cool. I think it's beautiful. And you know what? The one thing that's like a big part of breastfeeding for me that I didn't really talk about, I think because I was just so focused on like going through the notes and how everything went is like the the emotional aspect of breastfeeding which for me was a huge reason that I wanted to breastfeed just that bonding and I think it's really cool and special that my body was able to grow and nourish grace through pregnancy and now that she's out of the womb and out of my body I'm able to continue doing that in a way I think it's it's cool <laughs> but also if you're a parent and if you're someone who's tried breastfeeding and it didn't work for you or you decided to go a different route all feeding options are valid you're choice on how you feed your child is solely your own and whatever you choose it's valid we can't let that mom guilt win sometimes i feel it like creeping in i'm like nope 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 nope. i'm doing what's best for me and my child and that is that's that's all that matters also i do want to highlight just how privileged i was that even though i had issues in breastfeeding so far i had access to support to help me work through those problems like if i didn't have the lactation consultants in the hospital it very easily could have just been like yep breastfeeding isn't working even though i really want to breastfeed we're just gonna have to switch to formula right Right away but because I had the support of the lactation consultants and also Steven and my mom and Grace's pediatrician who was really supportive of me wanting to continue breastfeeding because I had that support we were able to solve the problems that came up to find the way that worked best for me and for Grace to continue feeding her and luckily at this point continue breastfeeding her which is what my preference was and like I said I think all choices for feeding your child are completely valid but I do think it's really sad that there are a lot of people who want to breastfeed and that is their preference but they don't have the support to make that happen and so hopefully some of this made sense also I feel like the lighting in here is not great but that's fine I just realized too I still have my little uh skincare headband on I took a bath earlier and did all my skin skincare and my self-care and stuff while Grace was napping. So I'm gonna take this off now. I'm gonna go wake up my baby and uh, enjoy the time with her breastfeeding before bed. So thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next vlog. Bye.